In these problems, we're dealing with this interesting geometrical construction called a transversal. And this is the situation where you have a couple of parallel lines, and then you have another line, a transversal, which crosses both of them. And you can see it makes all these different angles, and they've been numbered here, 1 through 8. Before we get started with these problems, there's some terminology you should know that gets um, tossed around when dealing with transversals. First of all, there are the angles that are on the inside, so sandwiched between the two parallel lines. Those are called the interior angles, so 3, 4, 5, and 6 are interior. And that would leave 1, 2, 7, and 8 on the outside, and those are called exterior angles. Also, angles can either be right next to each other, like 3 and 6, and those are consecutive angles, or they can be uh, not right next to each other, across from each other here, like 3 and 5, and those are alternate uh, angles. So 3 and 6 are consecutive interior angles, 3 and 5 are alternate interior angles, 7 and 8 are consecutive exterior angles. One other piece of terminology that you should know is uh, what a corresponding angle is in these situations. And you can think about it this way. You've got this parallel line and then this parallel line. As this line crosses it, it creates these angles. So when it crosses this one, it makes that particular angle at 2. Well, the same angle is going to happen when it crosses 6. So 2 and 6 correspond to each other. They're corresponding angles. In the same way, 1 and 5 are corresponding angles. Uh, 4 and 8 are corresponding angles. And then uh, another thing you should know before we start to deal with these problems is that the situ whole situation is actually simpler than it looks and there are only two angles um, or angle measures in this whole thing. One clue is that you have two places where lines just cross each other in, in the shape of an X and you probably know already that that creates pairs of uh, what we call linear sorry, what we call vertical angles. So 2 and 4 are going to have the same measure, and that's going to be exactly the same measure as 6 and 8. 1 and 3 are going to have the same measure, and that's going to be the same as the measures of 5 and 7. In addition to that, look at 1 and 2. They create a, a linear pair. So 1 and 2 are going to add up to a 180 degrees, as will 3 and 4, 2 and 3. So once you know any one of the angles in a setup like this, you can figure out all the other ones. All right, let's take a look at the um, at the first question here. It says, identify the relationship between angle 3 and angle 6. So angle 3 and angle 6, and actually we already mentioned this, they're interior, they're right next to each other, so they're consecutive interior angles. In addition, they're supplementary. They're going to add up to 180 degrees. How do I know that? Well, there's only two angle measures in this whole thing. This is one of the smaller ones. This is one of the bigger ones small and a big here in this uh, uh, construction add up to 180 degrees. So consecutive interior angles and supplementary. Let's look at another problem here. It says in the figure shown HC uh, is parallel to GD. So HC is this one, GD is this one. So it's same kind of setup, it's just been sort of um, thrown on the side from the other one. And here's our transversal crossing both those parallel lines. And it says, and the measure of ABC equals 95. So it's going to ask us then to find us a, a false statement. Before we do anything, read any of those, I'm going to write in the information that I know. The measure of ABC, so ABC, that's this one right here, is 95. Now, I've got one piece of information here, but I can actually write in a lot because I know vertical pair here, this is going to be 95. Corresponding angles, 95, 95. And then linear pair would be here. That would add up to 180. So this is going to be 85 vertical angles, 85 corresponding angles, 85, 85. So I've just got all the angles uh, written in in my transversal. Now let's take a look at, at these statements. Remember, we're trying to find the one that's false. A says ABH, so that's this angle right here, and AEG, that's this angle right here, so this angle and this angle are corresponding angles. And that's true, they are. The transversal crosses this line here, makes this angle below it, then the transversal crosses the second line, makes this angle below it. Those correspond. So that's true, not what we're looking for. B, HBF, so this angle right here, and AED, AED, so this angle right here, 
are alternate interior angles. Well, yes, they're interior, they're on the inside between the two parallel lines, and they're not right next to each other, they're across from each other, so these are alternate interior angles, so that's true, not what we're looking for. C says the measure of GEF equals 85, so GEF, GEF, so this angle right here, aha, uh -huh. well, this one is 95, not 85, so I think we found our answer, but let's just double check with D. This one says the measure of DEF is 85, D E, F, that's this one right here. Yep, that checks out. So it looks like C is the false answer. So that is a short introduction to transversals.